So this video is going to be about modeling with differential equations. Um, and so remember from the last time in class, we talked about models, and that is, is a, a model is a differential equation that represents a, a real-world scenario. Um, so this is some sort of an equation. It has a derivative in it, so it has a rate of change represented in it. And that equation tries to, as best as possible, because our world isn't perfect, represent some sort of a physical situation. So um, the first thing we're going to do in class when I see you the next time is actually do some experimentation and come up with our own model from that experiment. Um, and then, uh, well, then we'll get into some other stuff. But what I want to do is introduce you to two different models. Um, so the, fun. Um, the first one is a model for a falling object. So we have this mass, and it has a mass of m. Um, and so if it's a falling object, then obviously it's falling. And so that force would be a mass times whatever gravity is. So if we're on Earth, that's 9.8 meters per second squared. If we're in the metric system, or what is that, 32 feet per second squared, um, if we are dealing in feet. So against that, depending on how big this mass is, we also have a drag force. So that drag force is represented by some drag coefficient, I'll use gamma, uh, times velocity. So in here, gamma is our drag coefficient. and v is velocity. Um, m is mass, and I have not yet said that g is gravity. All right, now Newton said that if we have a force, any force is equal to mass times acceleration. So forces have to, um, have to equal each other. So if we have the force on this object that is mass times acceleration, and if it's falling and the other forces on it are mass times gravity in one direction, and that negative is for the drag uh, force going in the other direction. Right, so these are balancing out then. The mass times the acceleration is balancing with mass times gravity and the drag force going in the opposite direction, so subtracting off from the mass times gravity. All right, so now we're just going to look at this part of the equation, and really all I'm going to look at here is acceleration. So acceleration I could rewrite in a couple of different ways. So acceleration, I could say that it's a second derivative of position. I'm going to say x is position here. Um, I could say that acceleration is a first derivative of velocity. So there are different ways I can represent acceleration. This second one is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to substitute that in there. So we've got mass times the derivative of velocity. That's with respect to time. That's equal to mass times gravity minus gamma times velocity. Divide by mass and we get that the derivative of velocity is equal to, the masses are going to cancel out here, so gravity minus that drag coefficient divided by mass times velocity. So there's our first model. So there is a model that models the rate of change of velocity on a falling object. Um, so another thing we're going to do in class is solve this guy, and you guys right now have the knowledge to solve this, so I'd like you to think about how you would go about doing that. You don't need to look anything up, you just need to kind of dig in your brains into what you learned in calculus and figure out how you can solve this. Um, and then the other thing that we'll think about is what that actually means. So once you get a solution, what variable are you actually going to get? variable equals a bunch of other stuff. Um, and what does that physically mean? Um, so we'll talk about that in class. All right, one more model. And this is a model for a pendulum. 
can I spell? No, because I'm a mathematician, but pendulum. There it is, sort of, in my kindergarten handwriting on this, on this video. All right, so um, we have some pendulum. It's attached with a length of L, and here's the mass. So this pendulum here kind of goes back and forth and back and forth. That mass goes back and forth. So we're going to say that um, right now this mass is sitting at some angle theta right there. All right, so this mass, I'm just going to kind of draw a little bit of its motion here because we're going to need that. Okay, so again, the motion is the mash could be sitting right here and it goes up to there and then back down and then back and forth. Okay, so that's our pendulum. Um, so now what I want to do is draw a picture specifically of kind of what's going on right here around the mass for this model. So in this, we have our mass, it's right there. The length right here has some tension on it because that mass is pulling, pulling on that rod that it's attached to. Now, right at this very specific moment in time, when we have theta, we have this force kind of acting downwards. Okay, so we're saying that the mass is coming back down towards the equilibrium, and we have some force there. I'll call that F, that force. Um, now, acting downwards, we have mass times gravity acting downwards. And I'm going to create a 90 degree triangle right there. All right, so that angle right there is 90 degrees. And that means that this angle right here, I drew my picture too small, that angle right there is theta. All right, so if I take the sine of theta, now sine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is going to be that force, and the hypotenuse is the mass times gravity. So this means if I multiply by mass times gravity that I have a force equal to mass times gravity times the sine of that angle. All right, so there is part of this kind of puzzle in this. Um, so now the other part is that force is equal to mass times acceleration using Newton's law again. So force is equal to mass times acceleration, mass times gravity, sine of theta. Mass is canceled. I've got acceleration is equal to gravity times the sine of theta. Okay, so there's one piece of the puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle has to do with this arc length right here. So I'm going to call that arc length, I'm going to call it um, x. All right, so now arc length, if you kind of go back to some geometry, um, we can say that arc length is equal to that length L times the angle theta. So if I take the derivative of a length, that would be the same thing as velocity. And so if I take a derivative of this on the other side, I'm taking a derivative with respect to time, L is constant, so I'd have to take a derivative of theta with respect to time. Now I'm going to take another derivative here. So another derivative, derivative of velocity, is acceleration. And so taking another derivative, L is constant, that would be now a second derivative of theta with respect to time. Now that is what I'm going to substitute in for acceleration into this other equation. So I'm going to substitute in that acceleration is L times the second derivative of theta with respect to time. That's equal to gravity times the sine of theta. Divide by L, so I get the second derivative of theta with respect to time is equal to gravity divided by the length uh, times sine of theta.
Now, just notice that this equation is not linear. It has that sign in there, that sign of theta. And so this is something that's uh, gonna be a little bit more difficult to solve. I said that the other one you can do right now and you can. This one uh, you can't do right now. And in fact, we might not get to um, a kind of an algorithm to solve this specific one in class. There are other uh, there are other ways to do this. You could approximate the sine of theta as theta and make it linear and solve it. Um, that's done quite often. But as it is with the sine of theta in there, it is not linear and a little bit more difficult to solve. All right, so there are your couple of models, and we will pick up with those in class when I see you next.